In central Iraq, 60 miles south of Baghdad, lie the ruins of the ancient city of Babylon, which was once the capital of the Babylonian Empire. At its height in 600 BC, Babylon was estimated to have been the largest city in the world, with a population of more than 200,000 inhabitants. Perhaps the most intriguing ruin that remains in Babylon is the foundation of an ancient crumbled brick tower that was known as the Etimananki Ziggurat. And there are those who believe that the giant ziggurat may have actually been the Tower of Babel. The real Tower of Babel, from which the account in the Bible derives, was built by King Nebuchadnezzar II at the beginning of the 6th century BC. If you go to Babylon today, you can easily see on the ground where the ziggurat was because it is a rectangular ditch with a kind of black square full of mud and oily water which delineates the entire profile of this great tower of which nothing else is left. The tower was built made of mud brick. The building was seven stories with a little temple at the top. When there was a brick staircase without banisters so that King Nebuchadnezzar II could mount the staircase and go up and up to the very top. So it was definitely the national monument of the greatest amount of pride. Historians have estimated that the ziggurat stood nearly 300 feet high, or roughly as tall as the Statue of Liberty. But is it possible that this Babylonian structure was in fact the real Tower of Babel? Perhaps the answer can be found by examining the story that is recorded in the Bible. In Genesis chapter 11, you have the story of the Tower of Babel. Human beings are united, they speak the same language, they build this tower to go up into the heavens. But then you have God saying, wait a minute, what are these people doing? They're gonna build this and they're gonna come up to where I am. And so God basically confounds these people by having them speak different languages. So they're not able to understand each other. God says, let's scramble their languages and then they won't be able to communicate with one another. This is one of the most famous stories of the Bible. I think that the Tower of Babel is based on a ziggurat. If you're an ancient Hebrew, an Israelite, and you walk up to one of these large ziggurats, you're gonna be overwhelmed, right? You've never seen anything like this. It's very possible that the ziggurat of Babylon may be associated with the Tower of Babel. There's a lot of parallels. One is the location. Babel is another name for Babylon. That's more of a Semitic name. So the location's certainly correct, and it certainly was a very tall tower, as suggested by biblical sources. Some archaeologists claim that the most intriguing connection between this structure and the Tower of Babel can be found in the remaining bricks from the foundation of the ziggurat. Some of the bricks that we have have on the upper or lower surface a thick black deposit. And this is the remains of bitumen, which when the original building was put together, functioned as cement. And in the account in Genesis, it is pointed out that the Tower of Babel was built of mud brick with bitumen in between. So this is a very convincing piece of evidence that the one building is predicated on the other. But if this ziggurat was the Tower of Babel, then how was it destroyed? According to an ancient Hebrew text known as the Book of Jubilees, God was so angry with humans for building the Tower of Babel that he summoned a mighty wind to knock over the tower. Is it possible it was brought down by the power of God? Some experts believe that the story of the Tower of Babel and its destruction by God is based on an historical event, an earthquake in ancient times. In fact, quite a few ancient towers in the city of Babylon in what's now 
Iraq were destroyed by earthquakes. Archaeologists know that that area was and still is prone to earthquakes because in the year 2017, there was the largest magnitude earthquake in the world in that year, and the epicenter was only 100 miles from what was the ancient city of Babylon. If an earthquake did destroy the ziggurat, that could lend support to the theory that it was the legendary Tower of Babel. But many experts believe the true power of the Tower of Babel story is that thousands of years later, its warning about the consequences of challenging God still endures. The story of the Tower of Babel is absolutely fascinating because you have God basically cursed all of humankind by scrambling all of the language. And the morals of the story being, you're not supposed to show that kind of arrogance. You shouldn't try to be like God. Did an earthquake topple the Tower of Babel? And if so, is it possible that catastrophic disasters can actually be directed by the hand of God?